Copan's full laboratory automation is a modular, scalable, fully electric and customizable solution for automated specimen processing and culture workup in clinical microbiology. Samples move from front-end processing, smart incubation, digital microbiology, and artificial intelligence with interpretive algorithms for plate reading. University Health Network and Sinai Health Department of Microbiology in Toronto, Canada, receives more than 400,000 samples per year from nine hospitals and clinics in the region, and was one of the first laboratories in North America to adopt automated upfront specimen processing with the installation of Copan's WASP Walkaway Specimen Processor and Full Laboratory Automation WASP Lab. UHN Sinai Microbiology has seen many benefits and improvements using Advanced Artificial Intelligence, or AI software for microbiology, Phenomatrix. Hello, my name is Norman Sharples. I'm the CEO of Copan Diagnostics. Here today I'm at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in uh, downtown Toronto, and uh, I'm very proud and very pleased to, uh, to see uh, WASP and WASP Lab in full operation here. Uh, Mount Sinai were one of our early adopters uh, what I mean by early adopters, uh, they've got their first wash machine in 2010. This, this wash machine here uh, came shortly after, um, probably 2011, and then um, they used the lab automation here for a number of years, and then they took their wash machines and they extended their automation to include wasp lab. So they took their wash machines, connected track, to the smart incubators to allow them to move the plates directly from the planting and streaking on the wasp into the incubators. So uh, this is a great example of how you, uh, a great example of the automation journey starting from specimen processing, specimen setup into uh, full lab automation, including the uh, digital imaging and the smart incubation. And this is a very, very uh, exciting location for WASP and WASP Lab because they really embraced the technology and all the uh, advantages of both the robotics and also uh, of the software, the reading algorithms, and more importantly, the artificial intelligence, which allows the, the uh, rapid and automatic segregation of cultures. Yeah, we spent the time, and, and so did the engineers uh, at Copan, to really make um, phenomatrix reflect what our individual S standard operating procedures are for urine, for example, I'll use that, that particular experience. Um, and we wanted to make sure that that really reflected what we do. Um, and so we verified um, what was ultimately put to place and made sure that if uh, double checked to make sure there's no errors in how we would have interpreted the cultures, learned that Fino Matrix was more accurate in times when we missed the cultures, um, and ultimately felt extreme confidence in the system before we went live. This lab um, processes over 200 urines a day. 500 co combination of MRSA, VRE, and CPOs, and about 30 positive blood cultures a day. On top of that, about 40 stools and group B screens, all in our WASP and WASP lab. If I take you over here, what I want to show you is the two WASPs that are installed at this hospital. This is an older WASP that is electrical, and this is a WASP DT. Both are considered electrical. What they did was they still kept this one, purchased a new one, along with the WASP lab that we're going to talk about, but they attached the WASP lab to both instruments. Now the key thing about the specimen receiving, which is why we're in this area first, they used to receive every sample in here and it's, it took a long time to do that. These are our e-swabs and then these will go onto the WASP system. Then we hit start and it will scan in the barcode, receive the sample, which is taking away the work, uh, and it's a time saver for the staff, and they can focus on other tasks in the lab. And then it is all barcode driven at this point. It uh, will plant, streak, send it onto the WASP lab, perform a gram if required, and a broth inoculation. So what we want to show you over here is, on the back of the WASP, you have the broth carousels. They set up their selenite broths, their carrot broths, are set up in uh, these, they get inoculated, and you have an option of putting any type of broth on there. That broth is taken, incubated for a day, and subcultured, if required, on the WASP, and it goes into the WASP lab. It's gonna come along the conveyor here, and then the image is taken, and it goes into the incubator, and will remain inside the incubator 
for the uh, incubation time chosen by the lab. This is where the plates will come out and this is an inline carousel with 10 stackers in it and it saves space in the lab. Another thing to note about this wasp lab are the smart incubators are shorter than your standard incubators and this was to fit requirements with their ceiling height for safety reasons. So we have uh, only one person performing the screening and reading. This used to be done by multiple people. The benches would be broken up. You have at least five people. So you're taking one person that is looking at your urines, your bloods, uh, your CPOs, your MRSA, your VREs, your stools, and your groupies. It's all one person now. UH and Sinai is utilizing Copan's Phenomatrix software to automatically pre-assess and sort culture plates. Laboratory professionals can read, interpret, and segregate bacterial cultures with the click of a button, allowing them to decrease time to results so clinicians can make a differential diagnosis faster and start treating patients sooner. After the protocol-driven incubation time, users can access the plate images at the Image Analysis Workstation, where plates are screened in groups. Plates with no growth or no significant growth can be rapidly resulted and sent directly to the trash. UHN Sinai is using the segregation software in a customized way according to their operating procedures for urine samples and infection control screening. UHN Sinai uses a biplate with CNA blood agar and chromogenic media for E. coli. We were able to get exactly what we've done in the WASP app back to the LAS as if nothing changed. So it looks like a tech is actually documenting on the back of LAS when it's actually coming from the WASP app. So that yeah. must have saved a lot of manual, oh. ste manual steps. And yeah. Yeah. I, I can't even, how much time was saved, but it has to be a lot because if you don't have to touch the specimen and go into LAS and go right. straight on a pallet, I, it's at least a couple, couple to five minutes a piece, right? So okay. we're able to, with the information, we're able to automatically send a prelim status on the order, or if it's done and if it's a negative, we can send it straight out final, nothing has to be done on the LAS. Chemistry has enjoyed this way of auto resulting things for 20 years maybe. And microbiology is finally now yes. been able to enjoy that auto resulting of That's information. Right. Yes, so so we, we've had a couple instruments that are able to do that, but we never thought, I mean, with the WASP app, we said, you know, negative cultures, we want that to go out as final and we were able to do that. But when we add this thing about, you know, organisms, do we want the organisms to go? Are we are we comfortable with prelim? And we took that to our vendor LAS. And what was one interface to handle all of WASP that became three. So now we got all this data coming in and depending on what we're sending, we'll send it to an interface that says, send it out, but hold it back, don't status it. But if it's something that we want to go, send it to this other interface and auto post, auto result meaning we can go right to the final status, we don't have to do anything in LAS. So that means you're, the, the doctors, uh, the physicians getting their results faster, right? Would you yes, say? I would say when they're done on, on that particular example of negative urines, negative IC stuff, or the E. coli's that we're doing on the segregation, there is no manipulation in the LIS, so as soon as they send, that result is available on all the HISs or as a hard copy report. It's done. Wow. Plates are automatically segregated by the Phenomatrix software and sorted into folders. Urine no growth. Urine no significant growth, which includes plates with fewer than 10 colonies. Urine burgundy pink, with plates that have more than 10 colonies indicating a suspected E. coli. Urine burgundy female, which includes plates with more than 10 colonies of possible group B streptococcus in a specimen from a woman of childbearing age. Urine significant growth, which includes plates with greater than 10 colonies. Urine two plates, a folder for sterile urine cultures. Each patient has two plates, one with a one microliter and one with a 10 microliter inoculum. Urine other, where the lab sends mixed growth and gram positive plates. VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococci plates. MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Infection control, vancomycin-resistant enterococci, or VRE. At UHN Sinai Microbiology, patients are screened for VRE and MRSA upon admission. VRE plates are read at 18 and 30 hours, with a final read and result at 36 hours. 
plates are segregated in the folder by growth or no growth at each reading interval. Positive results are automatically sent to the LIS. Plates are held for 36 hours, at which point a negative result is sent to the LIS if the software has not detected growth and the user confirms this analysis. Infection Control Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. MRSA plates are read at 18 and 24 hours. Here, plates are also segregated by growth or no growth at each interval, and results are sent automatically to the LIS once confirmed by the technician. After users review the MRSA and VRE folders, they move on to the set of folders designated for urine cultures. Urine No Growth The Urine No Growth folder contains plates which the software has indicated have no colonies. Users have the option to change lighting, zoom into the plate photos, and check for more information about the sample, such as the collection site. If the technician disagrees with the software, the result can be changed. After viewing all plates and confirming the software's analysis, the user clicks Send, and the plates are automatically removed from the WASP lab incubators and sent to the trash. Urine No Significant Growth In the Urine No Significant Growth folder, plates with fewer than 10 colonies are segregated between void urines from female patients of childbearing age and void urines from all other patients. Technicians can scrutinize further and may send plates suspected of growth indicative of Group B strep for further analysis. Patient samples which are confirmed with no significant growth are resulted into the LIS and the plates are sent to trash. Plates requiring further workup are sent to the reader. Urine burgundy pink and urine burgundy pink female. UHN Sinai has validated the use of chromogenic media to identify E. coli. In these folders, the software has segregated any plates with burgundy pink colonies on the chromogenic side of the biplate and gives a colony count. If the user confirms the software's analysis plates, bypass the reading functionality and are sent automatically to the canister for a susceptibility test, the result is reported to the LIS as E. coli. The user also has the option to change the count, mark as no growth or no significant growth, or send to the reader for further analysis. Urine Significant Growth in this folder, the software has segregated plates with greater than 10 colonies. The technician can click on the I button to see more information about the patient. The user chooses to either confirm the software and send to the reader for further analysis and colony pick points, or to change the finding and send to the trash. Urine 2 plates. Sterile urine culture plates are segregated into the folder, Urine 2 plates. Each patient sample is inoculated onto two plates, with a 1 microliter and a 10 microliter inoculum. Plates with any growth are sent to the reader for further workup. Users can scan the patient barcode on the screen to see further details in the LIS. Urine Other The Urine Other folder contains plates which do not fall under any of the other rules created by the laboratory. Examples are mixed growth catheter cultures and gram-positive plates. Technicians carefully review each plate to decide how to proceed. At the reading station, technologists view all plates which require further analysis. Here, the user can choose colonies and indicate the type of testing to be performed. These pick points are loaded into the system so that the technologist performing the workup can quickly choose the colonies for identification and susceptibility testing. It's almost like you're having a buddy with you. Um, when you have your culture plates that you would take from the incubator in the morning, you're basically doing it on your own. Um, you do get to discuss with your colleagues, but in this system, you can actually have someone kind of give you a little, a little start, a, a push, <laughs> a, a head start. You do have the ability to kind of look at it and kind of confirm that this is so, and, uh, and then you move forward. Yeah, so basically now with the WASP lab, there's a lot less physical work with the plates. Uh, you go on a computer screen, and now with the phenomatrix that we have now, it's a lot easier. Uh, you're able to screen out your negatives and anything that's not significant very, very easily with a touch of a, with a, touch of a button. Uh, we've learned to really accept and adapt of what this can do and how it can help us and how we can help each other achieve uh, the workflow that we want in our day-to-day. Um, the 8 to 4 lab that most folks expect really is now a 24-7 operation that's around the clock. 
Um, our turnaround times are now being dramatically reduced and our quality is improved. Our efficiencies gain in terms of unit producing uh, work for unit producing staff. Um, all that because of the technological change. It really is a paradigm shift. And it, and it does ultimately also require that the users of the lab recognize that to maximize their potential. And no question, it does take time for that to happen, both for the lab to engage and, and move forward, but also for the users of the lab to recognize that as, as well. Um, but finally, there are solutions that are allowing for that to happen. So yeah, a definitely a different, different era in microbiology. So I think the, the impact has been on, in the lab, things such as efficiency, throughput, and uh, workflow. So it's improved significantly in all of those. It's also provided, because of the images, uh, sort of a record now of what is actually growing on the plates, what uh, the reports are going out as, and one can check from a quality assurance, um, a quality program perspective on those. So I'm very excited to be here at Mount Sinai as this is a great example of full lab automation and digital microbiology in all its facets.